If you've ever owned a car, then it must have broken down at least once. And with that comes a trip to your local car shop. But fixing a car requires lifting it up. And because mechanics aren't the Hulk, they can't exactly lift it with their own bare hands. Instead, they use a specific device that propels it up. That mechanical device is called a hydraulic jack. It pumps oil into a cylinder to help lift the car. Now, imagine instead of a car, you're lifting a giant dome. And instead of one hydraulic jack, you have 16 massive ones. That dome is Al Wasl Dome, the centerpiece of Expo 2020 Dubai. The journey of Al Wasl, the beating heart of Expo, lasted five years, from conception all the way to the moment it was crowned. But in the last 10 hours before the grand reveal, something unexpected happened. So I decided to go and take a quick nap and come back. And then by the time I reached, I got a call that uh, we have a problem. I was like, what? They said, we have uh, one of the uh, hydraulic jacks, okay, around the al Wasl. We had uh, 16 of them, was leaking. And uh, it was like really early morning. So, okay, so I said, okay, I'm coming back. Came back, you know, and I saw a waterfall, not a leak, okay. The amount of like uh, oil that was leaking, it was just massive, okay. So I said, definitely we shouldn't continue and we should wait and fix the hydraulic jack. This is Ahmed Al Khatib, the Chief Development and Delivery Officer of Expo 2020 Dubai's physical site. Before this moment, he was up for nearly a day. Despite this hiccup, Al Wasl Dome is now standing in all its glory at 67.5 meters tall and 130 meters wide. It's the world's largest 360-degree projection surface. In this episode, we'll hear from the masterminds that brought Al Wasl to life. I'm Noon Saleh, and this is Inside Expo, an official podcast of Expo 2020 Dubai, where history is being made. Domes have a long architectural history. Today, we see them over houses of prayer, like mosques or churches or temples. We see them over large government buildings, like the U.S. Capitol. But what makes Al Wasl so distinct is that it isn't just a dome. It's also a plaza, a place of gathering. The difference between Al Wasl and I think most spaces. For example, when we talk about Rome and we talk about amphitheaters or we talk about gathering spaces, physical buildings, is that typically they're not public. You have to prepare to arrive, enter through a door, and engage the space inside. Al-Wasl is a gift to the people of Dubai and anyone who passes through that place. It's very simple. It's yours. And it's yours to engage. And it's yours to engage on your own terms. This is Gordon Gill, architect and design partner at Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill Architecture, a Chicago-based firm that was chosen to design Al Wasl Plaza. Gordon is no stranger to ambitious architectural projects. He was the mastermind behind many global firsts, like the first zero-energy skyscraper in Chicago. And so when Expo was first being planned, the Expo team decided to hold a competition with many renowned architects. Gordon's team proposed Al Wasl Plaza, and their vision made the cut. All of those, uh, of course, like uh, different architects, they came with different proposals, and the winning one was the Al Wasl uh, Plaza. That uh, gives you just a very unique, uh, immersive experience uh, that you see, you feel it. You have to be inside it to know what... It is. Al Wasl means connection in Arabic. It's the heart of the Expo site. It links all of Expo's three pedals, or thematic districts, sustainability, mobility, and opportunity. 
and in many ways, domes are the crown to spaces that congregate. The physical form of the plaza itself was kind of realized in the original master plan. It was, you know, about five or six, maybe seven streets that come into this central hub. And so it was a circle. Um, the dome certainly is um, recognizable historically in the region, but also throughout the expo history and legacy, the domes have always, or spheres, have always been part of that um, identity. Domes have been central to Islamic architecture for centuries, but they were also a regular feature of other ancient empires, like Mesopotamia, Persia, ancient Greece, China, the Byzantine Empire, and also of indigenous building traditions throughout the world. And there's a reason for that. Domes have been seen by many empires to symbolize the heavens. Through al Wasl, Gordon and his team of architects were keen on paying homage to the history and heritage of Dubai and the region as a whole. The arches, the idea of, you know, being under a fabric tent, <laughs> the notion of the patterns of geometry that create fabric, that create everything from carpets to physical structure, um, mashabiyas, you know, the, the notion is is evident, if not not literally, but certainly evident in the history of Dubai. al Wasl's shape is inspired by the Saruq al-Hadid gold ring from Dubai's Iron Age thousands of years ago. The ring was excavated by archaeologists in the UAE desert, and it has become a symbol of Emirati heritage. It actually inspired the Expo 2020 logo. al Wasl was also inspired by the concept of a salon, which means living room in Arabic similar to the UAE Majlis. In Arab or North African households, a salon is a space that's reserved for guests. It's where political discussions take place, where marriages are announced and where people congregate. It's where we bring tea and desserts for guests. It's the symbol of hospitality and congregation in its purest form. It's one of the most intimate areas of a home, and Gordon wanted to bring that same warmth to a public space like al Wasl. It became the living room, or as we refer to it, the room for living. And so once we understood that as the kind of gathering space and that it would have this role beyond being just a place that you pass through, but maybe somewhere that you pause, or even ultimately being a destination, this idea of being a room for living means that you can converse in al wasl and engage a variety of people in al wasl without actually even speaking. But compared to a typical salon, which is permanently fixed, Gordon wanted to make this room for living dynamic, a space that is constantly evolving. It's an urban theater. It's a closed uh, room. It has a garden in it. It's not a flat land. It's more of an experience, like uh, a contoured up and down. It gives you different levels uh, of experience. And part of its dynamism means it meshes with nature. Gordon describes this harmony as having a microclimatic design. It basically means that the plaza is designed in a way that creates a comfortable environment for its visitors. For example, in a space as high as 67 meters, we're, we're creating um, thermal environments when the space is full of people versus when it's empty, um, when the winds are coming through at a certain temperature in the streets, with the way that the buildings are shading al Wasl, for example. It also means using a variety of plant species to cool the temperature inside the plaza during hot weather or finding innovative ways to protect the area from sandstorms. So if we talk about specifically about that, the steel, uh, the main contractor from Italy, uh, Cimolai, and uh, of course supplying the steel was from East Europe, from Slovakia, from Hungary, from uh, Poland, uh, from Spain. And, uh, you know, the main uh, work happened in uh, Vernone and Italy, close to Venice. Uh, the fabric came from the U.S. Uh, we shipped the fabric to China to cut it the way you see it cut in a very curved, beautiful shape. And then we sent it back to Dubai. Implementing this vision was a massive endeavor, and over 800 specialists worked to bring it to life. 
This required a huge amount of coordination all over the world. Another huge part of the vision was to build a dome that was structurally dynamic. As Khatib mentioned, Al Wasl is a dome that doubles as a 360 degree laser projection surface, making it the largest projection surface in the world. But making that a reality was not easy, and securing those projectors wasn't easy either. They had to be delivered from abroad. But when the time came for the shipment to take off, something unexpected happened. It was time to deliver the pods from Mexico. And uh, the plan was to deliver them through the sea. And the ships were ready, everything were ready, but Mother Nature wasn't ready. They had a massive hurricane in uh, Mexico. And uh, they said it will stay for a week. Unfortunately, it stayed like for three weeks and the pots were ready and couldn't move. Those weren't even the most challenging moments. The more difficult parts came later when Al Wasl was being constructed on site. While the project itself lasted five years, construction took only 18 months. It was like maybe the biggest challenge, to be honest, to build Al Wasl Dome because of the complexity of it, because of the location of it. It's in the middle of the master plan. The logistics of it, how to actually deliver all the steel in the middle, while everything was in a more advanced stage of the construction. The scale of it is huge. Lots of uh, work at heights, challenges on the actual site. And uh, just to give you an idea for people who don't know, Al Wasl actually starts from underground. Because safety was a huge priority, Ahmed and Expo's engineering team used tunnels to transport machinery and building material. These tunnels were built underground as part of Expo's legacy plan. So under Al Wasl, there is another city. So Al Wasl starts from underground. So you just imagine the scale. It's crazy, you know. And it's not crazy to build it. It's crazy to build it with the type of logistical challenges and the time frame remaining. But what made building Al Wasl even more difficult was having to think about its two lifetimes. Gordon and the rest of the team had to plan for a site that would host Expo 2020. And they had to plan for what comes next after the Expo wraps up at the end of March. So in the future, the goal is that the park would be Um, completed and the space would be landscaped and that it becomes this kind of hub that you simply, you know, have a sandwich in or bring kids in in a school bus to engage with the plants or look at the butterflies or come in the evenings and see a show. It might be educational. It might be informative. It may just be fun. But if you live here, you simply walk right through it. And after months of pressure, stress, and aborted crises, it was time for the big reveal. Remember that hydraulic jack leak I mentioned in the beginning of the episode? Well, luckily Ahmed and the rest of the team managed to bring that under control. Finally, they could heave a sigh of relief. You know, I'm so happy that God gave me the strength to (laughs) handle all those things, like really... The moment when we turned the projectors on for the first time, tears were everywhere, seriously. It is a kind of truly democratic space, um, much like a plaza, but yet it has it's this room. And so it walks this fine line between building and space, garden and technology, you know, the single and the crowd. It's, you know, the individual and the crowd. I, It has these personalities that are varied and rich and open to everyone. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. It doesn't matter if you're old or young. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's just there for you. And and that's what I love about it. Inside Expo takes you behind the scenes at Expo 2020 Dubai sharing our stories and others across the 170-year history of this global event. Learn more by visiting virtualexpodubay.com. Inside Expo is produced by Kerning Cultures Network. We release episodes every Tuesday and Friday. Subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss an episode. And if you enjoyed listening to this episode, share it with your friends and leave us a review.